the maker community as well is if you want to send something to somebody, you can literally say, I want to send you something, give me your address, and they yeah. send you your address with no questions yeah. asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it early on and um, to a guy and said, I want to send you something, can I have your address? He said, yeah, but I'm away. He said, here's my address, but I'm away for this next few weeks. I won't be able to respond on Instagram. I was like, great, I've got your address. I know you're away. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <It was>, in? <laughs> I've seen all your tools on Instagram. I know what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I even know where they are in the workshop. <laughs> I can go in the blind folder and take what I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but that, and even uh, like when we had the knife challenge, and uh, I sent a gift to uh, Glenn and KJ, of course, it was, Glenn uh, having his work schedule a bit uh, like he pleases, then of course there's a chance of him checking the mail. So yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> just uh, his wife. Here's the address for my mother. Just send it to her. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her know there's a knife in the mail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talking of uh, presence in the post of old, <laughs> I did post something two weeks to you. I don't think it's going to. I think it's uh, a problem with Norwegian postage or. <laughs> common denominator with english postage and it's uh, not going to hit you i'm not sure inside. because i uh, of course i have a, a company account that i never uses and of course uh, once a year they uh, withdraw some uh, small amount for uh, administrative fees or something and i got a letter saying that uh, you have overdrawn your account please add funding and all right that's that's probably fair i haven't checked account in a year so uh but I saw that the letter was sent 14 days ago and it just now arrived. So there, there yeah. is a hold up somewhere for some reason. So a weird um, time paradox thing is happy birthday for tomorrow. Or if you're listening to this, <laughs> happy birthday for last Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the oh, bank holiday it. there tomorrow. What? Bank Have holiday? A national holiday to yeah, everybody off work. Yeah, so it's nice. It's nice having your birthday on a holiday because well, there's always the day off. And of course, when I was a little kid, um, I always thought that it was my birthday when someone was uh, like having the flag up. And of course, <laughs> it was one day when someone were flagging on the half pole uh, because it was a funeral, and I was like. Oh, is it my birthday today? <laughs> <laughs> nope, the neighbor died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it's it's brilliant with uh, Wednesday off. It it really breaks up the week. So I did think of instead of having your three weeks holiday, should I just break it up into single days throughout the year and just have Wednesday off? Or of course you could have Friday. I had long weekends, but I mean, Wednesday is kind of, if you have that day off, it's, it's two day at work and you, you almost don't get to that point that, Oh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's still three days until the weekend because oh, now I have a day off and then you have two more days and it's the weekend. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Your Wednesdays are good. Maybe that's the, the thing I'll do when the kids grow up a bit. Yeah, you don't want to take Friday off because then you miss all the the Friday feeling and the cake and all that sort of thing. Mm. And if you take Monday off, yeah. that's nice for you, but then you're a day behind everyone else because everyone has start meetings and that sort of thing. But no one misses you on a Wednesday or well, Thursday. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. I, I take Thursdays off, so I do eighty percent of full time and never work a Thursday or. Thursday night or Wednesday night, but with shift work, you know, I've I've just done the weekend. So today is my Saturday. I think it's hard. It's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's also the bonus of doing it in the middle of the week is that it's not the weekend. So most people are at work. Mm. I, I think on on Saturday I uh, delivered our oldest to a birthday party and uh, realized that all the parents are leaving. So okay, I'm I'm not gonna stay here as the only adult. So right now I have two hours to myself, and I can't go back home because there's not much time to start anything before I have to go back again. So I just of course went to the hardware store <laughs> and instantly regretted it because it was a Saturday and like, what are all these people doing here? And they were just wandering around like 
mindless zombies trying to look for people to ask for things because they obviously didn't belong in the hardware store. But of course, it's a Saturday and they're only day off. So it was like packed with people. So I was like, nope. I just mm. turned around in the door and <laughs> found the coffee shop. There's like people who only go to Ikea at the weekends. I think it's hor- horrible because you never go to yeah. Ikea at the weekend. Not unless you have to. I, I, no. I, no, not even then. <laughs> You, you can't need anything that badly. Well, it's a, it's a tricky business because our nearest IKEA is over an hour away. And so to do it after work makes a really long, tiring evening. So Yeah. Well, you, yeah, so. you can go in the morning. I found I we, uh, re, you know, we before Rosie was born, we thought, right, we've got a spare day. Let's sort out her nursery. And we thought, oh, well, we now need storage for the things that are in that room and we went on a saturday morning first thing as soon as they opened incredibly convenient no one else is there it's actually better than during a week but i'm i'm very much on team weekday everything to the point that i get annoyed when other people are off what are you doing (laughs) off on a weekday i i i do shifts i was working at the weekend this is my weekend go back to work (laughs) what are you doing off have you not got a job (laughs) staring at people going oh God, lazy. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you don't look like you're retired and you're, you're too old to, you know, well, you're, you're not, you should be in school if you, if you're not working. <laughs> There's no chance that you also work shift. It's impossible. Get out. <laughs> Ikea, first thing in the morning, generally have um, a pile of scrap wood outside as well, oh. free to take. Yeah, I've um, done click and collects, and you can get there at nine o'clock on a Sunday. Mm. And they'll they'll ship the orders out an hour before they open. Yeah, big piles of uh, scrap wood out there. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the... But they started. Uh, oh, of course, my brother-in-law works there, and uh, they have started getting these. Uh, of course, they have vast uh, volumes of like uh, cardboard and. Uh, pallets and everything so that they now have these containers with uh, like the grinding wheels or whatever to compact them mm-hmm. and they now have a policy that they don't store it because it's too much it goes straight into the like the grinder so it's you have to know the people that are working that area that day and just have them to put something off because if you are planning on going down to lunch to just fetch a few things that you need then it's already gone so but that is something i really recommend i mean no have have someone in your family working at ikea (laughs) because uh you can just uh just send me a list so you don't have to come inside so you just uh pull up in the parking uh, lot like a, a drug deal and you just uh, here's, here's your trolley and just uh <laughs> venmo me the money and it's okay yeah. <laughs> and you... no you have to go inside and have the uh, meatballs and the hot dogs i mean that's part of the ikea experience mm. Literally the only reason I go, and the fact that I've got that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the hot dogs are there just to, to bribe partners to get, to to go with you. Yeah. It works. It was, I mean, I I enjoy going to IKEA on a on a weekday when it's not crowded, but my wife hates it even though even then. So I mean, she can take about half an hour until she gets grumpy and then okay now we have to put some coffee and cake in you and then maybe we can get to the exit in time that, that, that's why the cafeteria is if you're following the pathway all the way and don't do any of the shortcuts the the cafeteria is at the halfway point so that is by design yeah. so people are starting to get tired grumpy mm-hmm. and all right boost them up on all that is sugar, enough to keep them going for the next half hour until they are at the check-in counter. So we go to IKEA also because it's we like Scandinavian furniture and that Scandinavian home life um, vibe. Is it just like going to just a bigger, normal Scandinavian shop for you guys? No, because it's... No. Those are slowly dying out because they're... I mean, big stores like IKEA is pushing the prices. So unless you're a very niche furniture store selling 
extremely expensive handmade furniture they they are basically not surviving oh. so we are losing small shops left and right and then you're stuck with ikea and yes they do have some nice things and so on but uh, it's it's far and few between like the quality like uh furniture that uh, will last for two generations i mean uh, you put it together if you have to move it once and take it apart you will never get it tightly back together again so it's a bit sad but yeah i mean the, still, the only stores that uh, kind of survive are the ones w- that's that do stuff that ikea aren't that good at like sofas for instance i mean ikea sofas are really bad yeah so sofa stores oh, yeah. is a thing, and I mean dinner tables are they're quite limited, and beds I think are also quite limited. And what if you have, if you want a, a soft mattress, for instance, I think, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a thing <laughs> IKEA have na- nowadays. Uh, but otherwise, we had an IKEA mattress for a couple of years, and um, I was just getting constant pain in my back and various other places, and I. You know, I just thought it was just a symptom of getting older. And we swapped the mattress out, and it was like a miracle yeah. cure. All these aches and pains disappeared. <laughs> yeah, a good bed is uh, so worth it. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's because of it or if this is a result of me liking. I, I always have the hardest possible mattress, and... I'm still also comfortable sleeping on the floor with just a a pillow and no mattress. And when I was growing up, we had a dog. And of course, in the middle of the night, if I woke up, I would go and I would just bring my duvet and I would just lay next to the dog bed and I would use that as a a pillow. And then, of course, I would just uh, hug the dog like any teddy bear and... uh, after that, I just felt like instantly comfortable with sleeping on the floor. And, and I remember, I, th- I think it was like 12 or 13 when the Crocodile <laughs> Dundee movie came out. And, and he would prefer sleeping on the floor. And I like instantly, yes! <laughs> so, uh, but with age, of course, uh, I, I prefer a mattress these days. But uh, I still, I want them on the firmer side if they're too... If they're too soft, they're not supportive enough, and then I get the backache or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. I have the joy of a very comfortable bed at home, and then at work, occasionally it's it's quiet and it's time to go and get some sleep on the night shift. An incredibly uncomfortably horrible, ancient mattress. So, <laughs> if you ever need a reminder of just how comfortable your bed is, it's not going to a you know, a cheap hotel, <laughs> go to a hospital and find an on-call room. <laughs> yeah. and you it, just wheel us one of those um, adjustable beds in there. Well, it's got to be a spare one around, isn't there? Well, I, I've been angling. The, the Maybe I should get back on YouTube and get one of the mattress sponsors because I know exactly where that's yeah. going to go if, uh, <laughs> if I get given one. <laughs> <laughs> See you snoring when the alarms go off, and you just keep <laughs> keep being asleep. <laughs> but I'm still fascinated by. I mean, you spend a lot of time sleeping, and I mean, I don't understand saving money mm. on mattresses and a bed. Uh, you spend one third of your life, on average in the bed and it is like is that where you want to save two hundred dollars yeah. like <laughs> i mean buy something proper so uh, when we moved house we just all right we'll we'll get a new new bed and we just uh, pension off the the old one uh and then just buy a proper one so you actually sleep well it will improve your lives mm. in in ways that uh not even drugs can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just uh, what were you, would would you be willing to pay every night for a good night's sleep? And then, mm. I mean, a good bed, at least ten, fifteen years probably lasts. So mm. that's that's a hell of a budget. Mm. Yeah, because they say spend money on things that keep you off the floor, and you know, unless that's where you choose to sleep, but, you know, <laughs> obviously <laughs> beds, beds, you know, decent pair of shoes good tires on your car they're all you know, things that keep you from ending up on the floor it's probably worthwhile investing yeah 
Well, that's a that's a brilliant ending. That is just uh, having a half eye on the clock here. Yeah. Do you want to say bye a couple of times? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think we should just do a minute of silence thinking about things that keep us off the floor. <laughs> I'm sitting on my comfy chair at the moment. <laughs> yeah, a good, good computer chair. Definitely worth yeah. it. Yeah. See, my chair's comfortable, but it doesn't half make some noise. <laughs> Apart from when you want it to, apparently. <laughs> See, now, apparently. That's an ending. We'll all try and make noise on our chairs to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think my body will make more noises than my chair. <laughs> oh, no, no, no worry. I can just uh, have a quick look at the Glenn's timeline when we stop recording. And, uh, <laughs> there's enough source material there for some squeaky exit. <laughs> it's after about an hour when I start leaning back, and that's when it really starts clicking normally. <laughs> squeaky exit. That's a good. <laughs> Episode I think Glenn, Glenn's squeaky exit is the name of the side he's going to make, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's more of a symptom of the morning after. <laughs>